Muslims only fight because they were under threat. That's how they start, start fighting. Right. In the beginning. And of course, later on, when Islam became dominant in Arabia, the pagans were told to get, leave that holy place unless you become Muslim. If you become Muslim, otherwise you can't be around Makkah anymore. Kaaba. Kaaba is a holy place. You need to clean. I might never see you again. From all right. idol worship, from all the pagans, all the unclean people who worship uh, pagans, like Bible says that they were pagans were unclean people, or they're not. Idol worshippers were unclean people. Malachites, Philistines, they were unclean people. So God wanted them out of the holy place. Right. As long as they out. Okay, but if they didn't leave, what, what would the was realized after a minute? All right, so, so, so that so that is so that means it, does that still stand now? If you had a Muslim country, now there are laws. If anybody enters Saudi Arabia, they're going to be arrested. Right. They're going to be arrested. They're going to be killed. They're going to be arrested. At that time, this is how you control them. No prisons. There's no jails to put people in the prison. Even somebody steals a, a something. There's no jails. So the hand, so before religion came, yeah, and that's also an amazing deterrent. So what, and you let them free as well. Go free as well. All right. So uh, yes, uh, they were. Nowadays, if somebody do that, they're going to be arrested. They're going to be put in the prison. Right. So so they're kicked out of the country. So there's not something. Depend on what context you are, what kind of a time, how you go to, uh, how you make it. Uh, Our good of God makeup is what we're battling every day. Mm. Yeah, big demon. Right, that time was that. Right. So, so some people will define what is. I want to read this verse from the Quran. So I just want to find out if who it applies to. So this is Surah, uh, surah 8, 12. So it says, "Remember thy Lord inspired the angels." Uh, brackets with, mes with the message. I am with you. Give firmness to the believers. I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. Smite ye above their necks. Smite all their fingertips off them. So, is this talking about when just in defense? Or is does it involve the We others? need to read the verses before and after at least to understand. Right. And record, number 11 says, and recall, so it's chapter 8, isn't it? Yeah. Chapter 8, verse 11, I read. Mm. And recall when Allah brought on you drowsiness, giving you a feeling of peace and security from Him. And He sent down rain upon you from the sky that He might cleanse you through it and take away from you the pollution of Satan and strengthen your heart and steady your feet through it. And recall when your Lord inspired the angels. I am certainly with you, so make firm the feet of those who believe. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So strike at their necks and strike at every pole and tip. This is because they divide Allah and His Messenger. Whosoever divides Allah and His Messenger must know that Allah is severe in punishment. That is your punishment. Okay. I think uh, I am pretty sure he's talking about the Battle of the Trenches. I am going to be there what the, because it is. Doesn't say clearly what situation is that. He's just saying. But we need to see what what the situation was. The commentary. We have to read the commentary. Right. But the um. What's it? One eight. Number eleven. I'm going to read the commentary of number eleven. And recall when Allah brought on you drowsiness in the battle of Uhud. Oh yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Battle of Uhud. Yeah, Uhud. So what is this talking about here? Mm. He's talking about the battle. In the battle of disbelievers when they turn back, get them. They came to fight you. They came to destroy you. Right. To fight them. But that doesn't happen actually. Okay. Muslims, Muslims got defeated in that battle. Right. But isn't that straight? Right. So basically, what you're saying is that the scholars have to. Add that on. So, how do you understand what that means? Hmm? How do you understand that means? No, no, no. But, but, but I just take Quran everything literally. Yes, yes. Quran is coming at that time. We need to understand what was the reason that verse came from. What was the reason? Why? Why that verse came from? Right. So, so basically, what you're saying is that the. If anyone wants to read this and read what it says here that you should do with the unbelievers. I think verse 12 mm. is also about Battle of Badr. Because I read the end of verse 11. So the pollution Satan and strengthen your hearts. They're also talking about Battle of Badr. They're mm. all talking about Battle of Badr. Okay, yeah. let's see what the verse 12. And next and strike every pore and tip. Make the decision. Even, let's say, 
in view of the general principle propounded in the Quran, we presume that the angels did not take part in the actual fighting. What we may suggest is that the angels are He's talking about Badr. He's talking about Battle of Badr. First of all, about Battle of Badr. The very first battle. Okay, but, but you're saying that this particular battle, this is one. Wait, the first one, Badr, Badr was won. The very first battle was Badr. You're not going to say Right. The second one was Uhud. Okay. So the Muslim won that battle. Right, but these battles, is this because the um, they were living peacefully and then the um, unbelievers came and marched on them? Uh, then the context of Badr, but there's no that. That is the context of Uhud. But the context is slightly different. Mm. You can say more controversial, maybe. Right. Uh, Muslims, Muslims moved to Medina. So many who moved from Makkah, they have businesses in Makkah. Their wives and their parents and some families were still there. Only hundred and so moved to Medina. Yeah. Joined with the community in Medina. So their businesses were taken by the other tribes in mm. Makkah. Right. And their, their, their merchandise, everything. And they were taking their own merchandise to sell in I think, Syria. Right. Yes, they were taking there. And that was kind of on the way. Makkah is south, Medina and all. And they heard that their merchandise is going through there. So what do we do? And they were very angry. Muhammad Sassam, we, we need to do something about it. Muhammad Sassam said, Allah didn't give me any authority. Then Allah gave him the authority. The words came. You can fight. So they, no, this not this verse. I think there's another verse there. It says you can fight. So then Muslims went to grab from the caravan, which had maybe 100 soldiers protecting it. So there were 300 of them. So there was no battle. They were just going to grab the caravan and their stuff. Or when Muslims left, the news reached Makkah. And Abu Sufyan's caravan, Muslims are going to raid it. What are you going to do about it? Really? You're going to take thousand people to meet these Muslims? So they came with thousand people to meet Muslims. And the messages came very quickly to each other. And Muhammad Sassan found out the situation is like this now. Meanwhile, Abu Sufyan, the caravan guy, he heard the story as well. So he changed his route. So he's out of the reach of Muslims. Now Muslims are, uh, what do you call it? Uh, unintentional. Well, their intention was not the war. Their intention was to take their stuff. Now they are faced with thousands, army of thousands. That's worth, it's worth telling. Kill them. Right. So, so that was the war, war, war force upon them. But they didn't back off. Mm. They came to fight. They Muslims were only going to get their merchandise. And that was their their right. It was their right. So they get their merchandise. They got 300 people. And now they got the army of thousands. So the war, they, they didn't go out to war. You okay, so, so, so that, that, yeah. doesn't, that yeah. then, yeah. so doesn't that then validate what um, ISIS are doing in Iraq? Because they didn't ask for the Americans to come and blow the place up. Yeah, that's a different so, thing. That's why I say if anybody fight American, I have no problem. Hmm? If ISIS were only fighting the soldiers, I have no problem with that. In Islam, you can find, find the oppressed force. Any oppressed force coming to your country, you have full right to fight. But ISIS is not only doing that. What they're doing is they're killing the innocent journalists. They're killing innocent people. In Islam, that is not allowed. Islam is only allowed if you fight the oppressor. If anybody come into your country and, and take control, then in Islam you are allowed to fight. What you cannot do is... You cannot fight with the innocent people and kill innocent people. Mm. So, I am not completely against 100% against ISIS. But I am 90% against ISIS. Why? Because they've gone out of the way. Yeah, unless it's in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 32. Verse 30, if you take innocent, kill innocent person like you kill the whole mankind. If you take, I know you are laughing and I, I, you will be surprised when I'm going to answer you. Because you will be surprised why I'm saying I am saying it deliberately knowing the words in your mind. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Okay. Allah is telling if you take the innocent life, like you kill the whole mankind. Mm. So, so ISIS kill in one innocent person if they kill, to me they are terrorists. Now say what you want to say about that verse 5 verse 32. Wait, 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 wait just go, uh, you say it's 5, what is it? 532? Yeah, 532. Yeah, well all you got to do is just read the, yes. just got to read the rest of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think know. you need to read it from the beginning. And huh? We told children of Israel. That's what we do here. That's why we started. Yeah, yeah. We speculate to accumulate. Enough. Oh. 
Hey Lizzie, how are you? We only will have contradiction. What are you doing, you're doing? That's not your territory. And on the best of those books, we can't. You've got to leave that dawa table alone. You've got to leave that dawa table alone. Whoever's the Bible, whoever's the Torah, whoever's the Quran, whatever you name it, whatever you name it. God bless you. God bless you. Well, this is it. Since your heart is. Since your heart is sincere, stories, I know one day we will go by your parents. I, I read. Your You're seeking for the truth. The tradition. So what? Well, history is based on that five and. It's based five that is isn't it? Thirty-two. All right. For okay, so murder of a spreading mischief. Okay. But it says here. Um, oh, yeah. We ordained for the children of Israel. So, so you actually didn't quote the whole verse, did you? No, no. You tell me huh? where, where I went wrong. Well, well no. It doesn't apply on us. Hmm? It doesn't apply on Muslims. Well, if you start from the front, beginning, it says, on that account, we ordained for the children of Israel that if anyone slew a person, unless it be... Yeah, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, it will be as if he slew the whole people. Yeah, so that's for the children of Israel. So I don't see how that one counts for Muslims. Yeah, I Something which is given to children of Israel many times is applied on Muslims as well. Oh, so that includes the Sabbath? No, no. There's a verse in the Quran which says, And we ordained for children of Israel, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for life. But if you forgive them out of charity, it's better for you. And it's talking to Muslims. Yeah, so, so that meaning, actually... Meaning that applied on you, but if you give out, of, forgive out of charity, it's better for you. Meaning, if you don't forgive out of charity, do exactly I for an eye, two for two, that is okay as well. But if you forgive, that is better for you. Meaning, Allah makes it slightly better for us. Now I'll answer you in the same light of that, verse 32. Yeah. Now can you read verse 33 of the same I couldn't, chapter? If you told me you in love, this is the punishment of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive in might and main for mischief through the land. His execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and That's it. They, these are the punishments. That's it. Yeah. After that. Because the next is all punishment how to kill them. Yeah. Now, remember, with both these verses we read together, mm. the first verse says, don't take a life unless for two reasons. Life for life or spreading mischief in the land. Mm. Meaning if somebody kills somebody, you can take their life. Or somebody spread mischief in the land. But, but isn't that the reward? Huh? Is that what the reporters are doing? No, no, we're going to go that part. After, first I'm going to just prove it to you, mm. this verse still apply on Muslims as well. Right. Okay, this is not only for children as well, also Muslims. Let me make that point first. Now, verse 32, we agree. I read that for you again if you want. Therefore, we ordain for the, for the children of Israel that he who slays the soul, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief, yeah? on earth shall be as if he slain all mankind. Meaning, you, you are only insured, you are only allowed to kill two kind of people. Mm. Somebody murderer or somebody who spread mischief in the land. Yes? Yeah, but you do realize something. 33 repeats it. So, from what I'm seeing here is that it says ordained for the children of Israel um, that you slew the whole people as if they say... Let me make my point first. All right. Allah is telling in verse 32, mm. only two kind of people, in short, only two kind of people you can kill. The one who's a murderer mm. or the one who spread mischief in the land. Apart from that, you are not allowed to kill anyone. The children of Israel. Now the verse 33 mm. giving us the same principle. Exactly. Right. Those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger. Mm. What is war does? Kill people, isn't it? Yeah. Those who came wage war, they want to kill you, isn't it? Yeah. So those who wage war against Allah's messenger and go about the earth spreading mischief. Mm. Indeed, their recompense is that they either be done to death or crucified. Yeah. Let me make my point here first. Mm. So those people who wage war equals the same people who are the murderers. Yeah? Yeah. You can kill the murderer in the children of Israel. You are allowed to kill a murderer. Muslims were allowed to kill the one who waged war. Mm. Same thing. Yeah. Muslim, uh, children of Israel were allowed to kill some who, uh, the one who spread mischief in the land. Muslims are allowed to kill the person who spread mischief in the land. Mm. But Allah, apart from that, He improves. You can also forgive them as well. What He says is that their recompense is they either be done to death or be crucified or have their hands and feet cut off from the opposite sides or be banished from the land 
such shall be their de degradation. So Allah, what He did, He become a little bit merciful. To children of Israel, clear command. You kill them. Those who kill, murderer, kill, or don't mischief, kill them. There's nothing, no third category, no second category. You can crucify them, or you can cut their hand, or you can let them go. In Islam, the Quran is improved. So when it improved, it implied that words imply on you as well, uh, because this is implied. The first says you can kill them, same like children of Israel, but you can also cut their hands off, or either you can banish them from the land. So when Allah, this is what our order is for us, improve the order. But all, the principle is same. Apart from that, you can't kill anybody else. Right, but but the words that do imply up, 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 uh, apply to us. But the important bit indirectly. is yeah. But the important bit is as if you slew the whole the whole people. That's for the children of Israel. But for the Muslims, it's not as if they slew the whole people. Slew? No, it's it's not that case for the Muslim. But as if they slew the whole people. The Muslims are even better. It's better right. because you are even forgive. Children of Israel are supposed to kill them. The Muslims are even supposed to forgive them. Well, it doesn't say, it's not supposed to. Yeah, look, we say that the last. The, there are four kind of punishment Muslims can uh, 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 put on them. Yeah, so it's all. So, so they don't have to. No, no. Yeah, but yeah, they, there is an option there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. No, no. It's option. Mm. It's option. So how come when Muslim option is even more merciful, more merciful? The children of Israel, you can kill them, or you should kill them. But here, you can show even mercy. So this is implied. The how can that you kill an innocent person when the worst kind of a people you can even let them go? Mm. These are supposed to be the worst kind of a people, isn't it? The murderers. Those who wage war against God and Prophet and the mischief, they are the worst kind of people. Even if the worst kind of a people, Muslim, can let them go. Yeah. So how can this is this is implied? Apart from that, is going to be the worst thing you can do. Yeah, I know. So, so what you're saying? This is the whole context. Yeah, I understand. But so what it means is when all those the guys on the radio and TV keep using that. Kill the whole world. They, they, no, they, no, they, they should quote the context. No, because this is also applied on us as well. That's why. This is not only for children of Israel. Because if you read the next verse, it tells us, Allah is telling us, the people before you, I told them, if you kill anyone innocent, it's like kill the whole mankind. Only two kind of people you can kill. But for you, even those two kind of people, you can even let them go as well. So it is implied, innocent is going to be like killing the whole mankind. Because the principles of God doesn't change for, for whatever the principle was. Innocent in the eyes of God was always innocent. So this is, that's why these two verses are together. If you read them together, you understand Allah is giving us message, killing an innocent person is not allowed. Right, but, but... So ISIS killing an innocent person, they can't be right. Mm. Never. Actually, Allah says again and again, you know, in chapter 9 as well, uh, those who have treated with you, even they are pagans. I know. Those who your agreement there. That I know. And Allah says, fight against those who fight you. Many times. You can never show me anywhere, Allah says, fight against those who are innocent. Fight against the children. Never. Even in the Bible, they say that, kill the children. Kill the children, kill the donkeys. It's completely in a sense. Well, well, and Muhammad killed teenagers as well. Huh? Muhammad killed teenagers. So teenagers can't be guilty, no? Hmm? Teenagers can't be guilty. Teenager can uh, chop somebody's head, you know, that in those times with a sword. So, uh, yes. 